Humans have always attempted to communicate with animals, understand them, get them to understand us and live together in harmony with them. And with some animals, we've actually made particular progress. These are domestic animals, of course, with dogs leading the list of non-human species with which we have the most cohesive and efficient form of interspecies communication. These are animals that are used to living with humans. With animals living in the wild, we've made some bare minimum progress primarily because a lot of the relationships between pitch, tone and speed of vocalizations are similar across some species. It is thought that humans and 59 other species have very similar patterns in pitch and speeds of emitted sounds, so behavioral feelings like aggression, approachability, fear, submission are all translatable and understandable across humans and these 59 species because of the similarities in sounds produced as a reaction. There are some animals that we have worked with a lot. Dolphins, naturally, and these are highly intelligent animals, of course. Grey parrots, also highly intelligent. And we have chimps. Chimpanzees, of course, are also extremely intelligent. They are primates, they are one of the great apes. The others are bonobos, gorillas and orangutans. Researchers have worked a lot with these primates, interpreting their vocal sounds, teaching them sign language and attempting to understand their own language. Language does not fossilize, so this is the only way to go about it, to observe societies, observe how they communicate and attempt to understand the language. Now finally, with chimps specifically, researchers have understood some of the basic syntax that these animals use for communication. These primates make a variety of noises and these researchers have figured out the structure to their sentences. Let's see what they found out. Chimps combine vocal calls into ordered sequences. This is basically like syntax or grammar. We know different words which we combine into different sequences to make different sentences with different meanings. Humans have a substantially large base set of words to work with. Each of us easily knows dozens if not hundreds of words which we can then combine to form newer and newer sentences. To understand what chimp words are or the building blocks of their language is, the researchers collected and analyzed over 4,800 vocalizations produced by 46 wild adult chimpanzees in Ivory Coast. They discovered that these chimps have 12 different vocalizations. These are sounds like hoos, barks, grunts, pans and screams. And the animals combine these different unit sounds into 390 unique sequences. To understand how the language is used, the authors lay out three structural capacities that they wanted to measure in the way chimps communicate using these basic units of sound. The first is flexibility. Can different bits of sounds be combined with different other sounds and change their meaning? Next is ordering. Can sounds be produced only in a particular order? And if they are ordered differently, does the meaning of those sounds change? The third is recombination. Can shorter sequences of sounds be combined to make longer sequences that mean other things? Human speech has these three parameters and the authors compared human speech with chimpanzee speech to understand at least the syntax that these sounds use, if not the meanings of the words or sounds themselves. And there are usually meanings associated with sounds because obviously chimp language is not as sophisticated as human language. To understand how the chimp language is used, the authors first started noting down two unit sounds or bigrams, which are two different sounds that are combined together. They observed each bigram's frequency in their set of recordings to see how many single units combined with how many other single units of sounds where in phrases they occurred, whether these pair sounds were preceded or succeeded by other sounds, whether their component sounds recombined and so on. They also studied trigrams or sounds with three units and performed the same analysis. 
So some of the basic things that they found were, for example, a majority of sounds can be modified by the chimp adding a pant to it. So chimpanzees had a grunt sound and then they had a panting grunt sound which meant something completely different. There was a bark and then there was a panting bark which modified the bark to mean something else entirely different. The authors give few examples. Single grunts were mainly used when eating and panting grunts were used during submissive greeting vocalizations. Single hoos or single hoots are emitted towards threats, but panted hoots are emitted towards other chimpanzees. The team noticed that all these single units of sounds were very flexible when it came to their ability to be paired with other sounds. Some bigrams are at the beginnings of phrases while some are at the end. Some bigrams showed patterns where the first part, the first unit sound was always the same or the second part was always the same, meaning that some sounds had an increased propensity to be used similar to a prefix or a suffix to other sounds. Some bigrams were produced much more frequently than others and many bigrams or two unit sounds could actually also be recombined or become a part of trigrams which are three different unit sounds combined together. For example, a bigram could be a grunt and a bark. A trigram could be a panted who, followed by the bigram of grunt and bark, followed by a third different sound, say a non-panted who. That is a trigram. So the sentences were complex enough to where unit sounds could be combined into bigrams. Bigrams are flexible in their usage. Bigrams could be combined to form trigrams. Trigrams are also flexible in their usage and the reordering of sounds changes their meaning. This is very complex communication and we can see this in chimps because they are some of the most intelligent animals on the planet. There are other apes and great apes that also form hierarchical combinations of sounds and sequences in their communication. This ordering and sequencing of sounds is also observed in 31 other non-human primates. In non-singing species of animals, the diversity of larger and larger sequences is higher in great apes. Of these, chimpanzees show the highest degree of variety and flexibility in their vocalizations. This bit of research actually follows several decades of study into primates and chimps. We have of course learned the most about chimps from Jane Goodall who is the world's foremost authority on chimpanzees and has studied them for over 60 years. She is the only human to ever be accepted into chimp society and she was a part of a chimpanzee group. Her studies were initially criticized to be very anthropomorphized but today we understand that her observations and the similarity to human behavior is in fact how these apes behave in nature. The most spectacular of her observations of the chimpanzee population in Tanzania is the one where chimps get together, gather arms, form warring factions and engage in actual war. Actual wars with arms. They use weapons to kill and go as far as to engage in cannibalism during a battle victory. If you're interested in knowing more about this crazy war that Jane Goodall described in her book, I suggest looking up Gombe Chimpanzee War, a very brutal and violent conflict between two groups of chimps over a period of four years in Tanzania. When Goodall made the findings and wrote about them in her book, she was not believed. She was accused of excessively anthropomorphizing chimpanzees and attributing human-like behavior to them. But today we know that chimpanzees naturally war with other chimp groups for power struggle and for mating purposes. So if they can organize enough to strategize killing using arms, isolate a separate individual, ambush them and engage in war savagery, surely their communication abilities are also quite high. Today we know that they are and our research has also advanced enough to break down chimp language into its constituent smaller sounds, the individual sound that is analogous to words in human communication. The authors state that different recombinations of the same sounds produce different meanings. 
So the flexibility of chimpanzee language and their variety of sounds provides structural complexity to their language where they can create new meanings, describe new things and convey new ideas. Currently, further research is needed to understand how chimps adapt their language to introduce new concepts and describe them. But the findings so far show us that great ape communication is much more complex than we previously thought. And now we are one step closer to understanding these beautiful and funny animals and maybe even communicate with them in their own language. 